So there are billions of posts on Reddit and most of them contains images, videos, GIFs and embedded media. So Reddit wanted a, an efficient and effective way to manage and analyze them. Basically add some context, add some metadata to it to make it searchable. The metadata could be in case of video, it is as simple as thumbnail, playback URL, bit rates, etc. Now what was the core problem? The core problem for Reddit was not that they did not have the data, they did have the data, but the data was distributed across multiple databases. So they wanted a unified way or a unified place where all the data is stored and is queried in a very consistent manner. Right? Now they architected a very interesting solution. Let's go through that. Now what they did is they chose AWS Aurora Postgres to hold the metadata. Now this would become their unified metadata store. Now, because they were using Postgres, they had to have a PG bouncer in front of it. Now, PG bouncer is a simple proxy that does connection pooling for Postgres. Now, why connections are expensive on Postgres is because whenever a client connects to the Postgres, the Postgres, instead of spinning up a thread to handle it, it spins up an entire process to handle it. Because of which, it becomes slightly expensive when there are a large number of connections queried. So, you need someone to manage the connections for you. Right. Now, if you want to deep dive into it, I have a video series on Postgres internals. I would highly recommend you to give it a look, right. but for this video, you don't need it. So given that you have a proxy in front of it, you would typically have your service layer, your bunch of APIs exposed in order for your clients to get that information, the metadata of the media object that have been uploaded, right? So this is standard three tier architecture that they have, but it's not just building this database and adding an API layer is sufficient because the data was widespread across multiple databases. They had to migrate the existing data from the current databases into this unified metadata store. So the key challenge here was to migrate several terabytes of the metadata from various sources to this, to just tell you the sheer scale of it. They, they currently serve hundred thousand requests per second. 100,000 requests per second, which means that the live traffic is there. And now you need to, while ensuring that the live traffic is continued to be served, they need to do this data migration, which is what makes it interesting. The blueprint of data migration looks something like this. The first thing that they did is to enable dual writes, which means on the source database that it was going, the client, when it is writing the metadata, the metadata goes to the source database and to this metadata DB. Now this ensures that the newer data is going to metadata DB. Right? Up until now, the reads are not served from here, right? Only writes are run. So first step, enabling dual writes. Second step is they trigger a backfill from source DB to metadata DB. So a simple job that does the backfill, right? Now this way, the older data would start moving to the metadata DB. Third is now they configure the dual reads on both the databases. So the unified and the source database, this way they would figure out any discrepancies or any errors or any mismatches in the data that is being served. Once they are confident that there are no errors in the thing, they would slowly ramp up the traffic on the new metadata DB, completing the entire transaction or the entire migration of the data, right? Okay. Now, although this looks simple, there are two very interesting challenges that come with this. First is that the right to the metadata store can succeed uh, while the source DB might fail or vice versa. Now the problem with that is of inconsistency. The data is there in one place, but not in another place. Problem one. The problem number two is that what if the data that the new data is written to metadata, but backfill process overwrote it with the old version of the data. You don't want that to happen, right? So how did they solve this problem? They solved this problem by adding a Kafka stream in between and here's how. So this was the architecture that we discussed, a service layer, a PG bouncer and their unified metadata. Now what they do, the clients were doing dual writes, right? So they established a CDC and ingested all those events in Kafka. The consumers picked up those events and they, before writing, they did this check, right? So that all the validation for any inconsistencies is being checked before it is ingested. So this way, your backfill is a very simple process and these consumers that they wrote takes care of ensuring or to check for any inconsistencies. And in case there are any inconsistencies, they report it into a separate table. Again, these two are same databases, but they report it in a separate table so that uh, engineers can take a look at it and fix any inconsistencies that they see, right? Really easy. Now, how do they store the data in the database? 
Although they are using Postgres, it does not mean they store the data in terms of uh, like basically by following 3NF or a complete normalization. What they did is they stored the data in a simple JSONB in a JSONB data type column, which means the entire metadata was stored as a JSON inside Postgres, which means they were effectively using Postgres as a NoSQL key value store. Okay, now to talk about scale that they handle with this, the new metadata store that they built was heavily optimized for reads, right? They were serving 10,000, oh sorry, 100,000 requests per second with P50 latency to be 2.5 millisecond, P90 latency to be 4.7 millisecond, and P99 to be 17 millisecond. And they achieved these numbers without having a cache, a read through cache, right? Pretty impressive, right? Now, isn't a large amount of data problem for edit? It actually is. And whenever you have large amount of data as a problem, you typically rely on data partitioning as a way to solve it. And because the media metadata store of Reddit was based on top of Postgres, they could leverage a very popular extension called pgpartman in order to manage the partitions. Now, pgpartman is a very popular Postgres extension that allows you to create and manage partition on the basis of time and basis of number. It gives you a very simple declarative way to configure your partition management policy. So for example, you just need to specify which table to partition how you need to partition when you want to trigger the partition. Simple. So what they did is they defined this that hey this is my uh, this is my partitioning strategy and they defined a cron schedule that runs every week that just invokes the method. This way the department takes care of creating and managing partitions dropping it as per the retention policy. And this is how Reddit handles their or has built their media metadata management system which handles 100,000 requests per second at a P90 of 17 millisecond. It's a very interesting design and I would highly recommend you to give their blog a read, right? I'll put it in the I card and yeah, this is all what I wanted to cover in this one. I hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it amusing. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a ton.